Hey, business building warrior. Hope you're having a great weekend. If you're listening to this right when it comes out, it's on a Saturday. This is our weekend update. A weekend update, if you're new around here, just means we've gone back in time, maybe a few days, a few weeks, or a few months, and we've grabbed some inspirational, informational, helpful tips and strategies from recently popular episodes where we've typically interviewed a guest who's a success story from our community, and we put them on the stage and we talk to them about what's working, what isn't, what challenges they're facing, what strategies can they share with us, excuse me, about their business. So let's dive into this weekend update in just a moment, and you're going to hear the clips that we've compiled for you today. But before we do that, a couple things about this show. First, if you're brand new around here, you should know the vast majority of our episodes are, as I just described, interviews with successful students from our community. We've got a free Facebook group. As I'm recording this, over 72,000 people from around the world using the strategies we teach to build beautiful businesses online. Jump in there if you're not a member yet. Silentgem.com has the link. The other thing that all of these people have in common that you've heard on the hundreds of episodes of this show are the fact that they're using the Proven Amazon course strategies to grow their business. Now, inside the Proven Amazon course, you will find dozens of helpful modules that can meet you where you are and take you to the next level. So we have students who have 10,000 or 20 or $50,000 or more businesses who study the content in the Proven Amazon course. And we have brand new people who've never sold anything online and they're not even sure if this is a business that's right for them or not. We've got modules for everyone. The course grows with you. So that's the other thing that all of our guests on this show have in common is they are successful students of those strategies. So we're very proud of the fact that we've compiled hundreds of interviews with those students. If you want to see even more success stories, jump into our free Facebook group, like I mentioned, at silentgym.com. There's a link to the course. There's a link to our coaching, all that good stuff. Something else I want to put on your radar before we jump into the content for this weekend episode is the fact that July 6th through 8th of 2023, you want to circle that on your calendar and plan to join us in Columbus, Ohio, as hundreds of listeners to this show gather along with nearly all of our coaching team. And we have about 60 coaches, hundreds of listeners to this podcast, our successful coaching students, proven Amazon course students, all the sponsors who can't wait to be a part of the excitement. We're all going to go to Columbus, Ohio, July 6th through 8th for our 11th annual get together with over 40 breakout sessions for content for absolutely every stage of Amazon experience or e-commerce experience. If you're brand new, just checking it out, you're going to love this event. If you've got a $100,000 a month business and you're looking to expand, you're going to love this event. You need to be there. It's great networking. You're going to have a blast. If you've listened to a handful of episodes recently, you've heard us talking about it. If you have questions, get over to theprovenconference.com. Odds are we answer all your questions there. Again, the website. Remember these three words for our July 6th through 8th event. These three words, The Proven Conference. Go check it out. Hey, let's get into the weekend update. Can't wait to show you what we've got for you today. I had so many questions, you know, and like any newbie, it's just it's so difficult to, to navigate when you're starting out. And I remember just constantly bombarding him with questions. And he actually teaches wholesale. So he is familiar with students and I'm bouncing these questions off him like every day and I'm not even selling yet. And so finally, I was just like, okay, I'm going to start trying to send some product in. So I sent some speakers in from Walmart and of course they got lost. Um, by, I mean, I had just, I, I, I had all kinds of issues. And then finally I got them, they, they, they got them, they sold out within like two days and I made like $400 profit. And I was like, okay, you know, this is proof of concept. It, it definitely works. And I got my little scanner and I'm going around now every Walmart and, you know, Meyer. Meyer's big in our area. You know, and then those regional stores, which, you know, I, I learned from you guys, which was huge. So I think about in March or April, I have to look, probably April, I took, I, somehow I stumbled upon your videos, you and somebody else. I had, I took two courses. I took the proven course, I, I enrolled in that. And then I took somebody else's course and I went through all your videos. I mean, I, I went way back and I soaked up like everything I could think of because this is like my livelihood now. And, you know, I'm just trying to learn all this. and. um I, I took another course at the same time. So I kind of molded both together. And then, you know, I was off, you know, how you say, you know, uh, you know, regional stores are just 
pretty much the best that you can, you know, source at. So I was hitting up those regional stores and I was doing really good. This was back in April, about May. I did like 40,000 and then June 60. And then I took two weeks off in July and I did 60 in July. And then August, I did 110. And then this month, I, I don't know, we'll see. It'll probably be around 100 this month. Is that... All retail arbitrage? No, uh, I did retail arbitrage back in the forty to forty thousand, and I'm still doing some. When I was doing sixty, I was doing about half and half, maybe even more. And then I went to OA, primarily OA. So the retail arbitrage is always there, but it was just I I could scale heavier, you know, better, and spend my money quicker on OA. How are you handling the prep with all the online purchases? I, I am honestly doing my own prep. Good. For you. Uh, yeah, it makes me super busy, but in terms of capital wise, it makes sense right now because sure. you know, if I did the math, it would cost me four, around four thousand dollars a month for somebody to prep it. Yeah. And I only prep about uh, fifteen hours a week. Yeah. So that's basically I'm giving away a lot of a lot and I need that capital right now to grow. Right. So I will peel off from that. So what's your net margin on the operation right now? You said you just uh, had a hundred and ten thousand dollars. Hundred and ten thousand uh, dollar a month. Yeah, but 20, it was 21% last month. Plus, you know, if you count in the Rakuten and credit card cash backs, and I mean, I probably made, I'm thinking around 24,000, 23, 24,000 in profit. Net profit. With, okay. with all the, with the cash backs and stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, not bad, man, for a 15 hour a week gig. Not, not bad. I mean, that's just prepping. Um, I oh, mean, that's I'm, just your prep time. I that's just prepping, you're doing yeah. all your sourcing as well, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I could do a lot less work. I mean, I'm probably I'm probably doing sixty hours a week okay. with everything. Right. Yeah, but it's, but still, it's because it's pretty incredible income too. Because that's a uh, what for that's about three hundred thousand dollar approximate income working hard. Yeah. But you could cut into some of that net margin and automate some of those processes, which I'm sure that's where you're heading eventually with this business. Oh, absolutely! It ramped up very quickly. It's admirable. I mean, you achieved a lot very quickly. Yeah, I well think done. it helped just having a, just a background in buying and selling my whole sure. life. You know? Being comfortable with it, the numbers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it just I just jumped right into it. But yeah, I'll definitely untangle from. I mean, in terms of prep, I have a guy who helps me. He labels stuff, so I I just upload everything into Inventory Lab and spit out all the labels. He la- actually I I volunteer at the homeless shelter here in Midland, and <laughs> uh, where I'm at, and uh, they actually have. All kinds of people coming in and out from there. So we, what we try to do is find roles for them. You know, in the community, they're always looking for jobs. So yep. I'm taking grabbing people, bringing them back. You know, to prep. They want some extra money. They they want. They usually want to get some cash. You know, um, just to get back on their feet. So that's what I've been doing. The guy that I had, the guy that was really good, he actually is going to college now, which is cool. He just started. He enrolled oh, in college. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. So, and he's still coming back, uh, driving back about 30 minutes just to work now one day a week. Cause he didn't, I, I was going to get somebody else, but he didn't want to stop. He enjoyed it. So he's a young kid and just get him back on his feet. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've been a bit of a mentor to him and you know, this is a, a significant turning point in his young life. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Like, um, you know, I was telling you before we started, you know, I'm a Christian. I was saved, uh, about 13 years ago. Now I'm, 41. And, uh, it, you know, it's important to me. And, you know, he came, he had a really rough background I don't push it on anybody, but if God moves, you know, and wants to start up a conversation, it, it really flowed with them, you know, and you're just laying out all these verses and it's just, it's just coming to you and we're having a really good conversation. And I just left it like that. Now he's, he's going to Bible studies, he's going to church and stuff he's just never done. And I just thought, you know, I'm just, so glad that the, you know, awesome. the Lord is using me, you know, in that in that way. You know, using Amazon, you know, using this, you know, bridging these two things together for me. I say all the time, you know, if you're if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, your business is your ministry. It's right. not about trying to be creative and figure out, hmm, how can I make this my ministry? It is your ministry. You have no choice in the matter. Right. <laughs> right? It, yeah. How good at it you are, maybe up for debate, but that is your ministry. That's where God has you. That's what you're called to do to serve. And I love that you've brought a guy in. So he just wandered into your homeless shelter at one point. Is that how you met him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then you built this relationship and friendship. And how far back does this go at this point? With this, um, For him, probably like three months now. Yeah, but three a lot's months. happened in three months. He's really turned his life around and you've been a mentor. And 
Oh yeah. Oh, he has for sure. It's, it's, a, it's a huge change and he, you know, he even admits it. So yeah, it's sad to see him go in that role. I eventually I want to get, he's still doing, like I said, one day a week, but I do want to get somebody full time at my place to do it in terms of uploading the inventory lab, doing all the prep, but me still having the center here. Cause I could save a lot doing that. And I'm still have my last little hands and whatever it goes on, you know, yeah. it's, for it's mistakes. Still got a fairly young business. It's scaled quickly, but this is a young business. Yep. But you will find over time that you're less and less needed. <laughs> for this. Oh, yes. Yeah. And there's some great prep centers out there that, you know, yeah, it takes a little extra margin, but your house is empty. <laughs> it's right. You know, at some point that becomes worth, yeah. worth the trade-off or maybe even just a neighbor across the street or something even, you know? Oh, yeah. I would, I would love to do that. I mean, eventually that's the goal. I'm, I'm, I'll get there. Once I have I mean, yes, you know, I'm, I am making good money, but you know, a lot of people don't talk about it. you. You just throw it back in, you know. Yeah. You, I, I take out enough to live, and you know, throw the money back in. So I didn't take anything out for the last six months because when you scale that fast, you know, you're buying fifty thousand dollars in product, and you've got to have fifty thousand dollars somewhere. Great point. You know? I was taking the pictures every day and sending them, sending them over my Google Drive. Actually, I reached out to you. I don't know if you remember, but I reached out to you on Facebook and asked you how you did that. And you told me, you know, you just dump it in the Google Drive. And Oh, yeah. Use Google Drive. Don't use yeah, like Facebook that was, Messenger. I asked you how you did that. Yeah, how that was done. <laughs> Great tip, by the way, because you get the actual full resolution image and it's a much cleaner image. Yeah. Yeah. You just take it from your phone and you actually you click on all the pictures and then you hit share. And then it shares and it says, where do you want to share it? Right to your Google Drive. Right to Google you click Drive. that button. It goes right to your computer. Completely free. And yeah, exactly. And then she, you can give her access or your VA access and they can just get in your Google Drive. And yeah, she would just go through all the pictures and that's how I trained her reading Keepa. And I would put notes on everything. We did Google Sheets. So I'm like a big advocate for Seller Amp. And I use that. I use that software all the time. I'm not, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid by them or anything. I use it all the time. They have Their Google Sheets are awesome. And that's what we worked off of. We, she typed everything into Seller Amp popped up the listing. If it was good, she hit one button and convert over to your Google sheet. And then I look at the lead and then we meet like once a week and go over them and just kept training and training. She just gets better and better. How many have you found and how many uh, activations do you have right now? I've got 400 right now, right around 400. And um, it kind of, yeah, it definitely fluctuates. Uh, I found a lot of my ASINs. I do have some replants left from the very beginning, but those are mostly all gone. They they come and they go. You know, like any sure. good item you find, it, it you find it, and you know it's good for a few weeks, and uh, you know then it's gone. Poof! You know somebody, some big dog finds it and comes and takes the listing, and it's over. <laughs> yeah, and quite <laughs> often I have it'll come back that, too, though. It'll come yeah, back. they come back. Yep, they come back, and uh, I, I also use Replen dashboard, so they come back, and I, I check on there, you know, to see if they have came back, and a lot of times, uh, just wait a few weeks and there it is, you know, yeah. again. Have your, have your VA do that, actually. We've, we've got a program. That's the system we use is every so often, a VA goes through our entire list of ASINs that used to be good that aren't anymore and finds inevitably a good handful of winners that uh, are now getting ignored. That, you know, maybe they tanked at one point. Now they're back to being hot. Yeah, absolutely. And back when I was saying when she was um when I was taking pictures of the shelves, just type it in manually. You know, she's typing in manually, going through, finding the packs, finding the bundles, finding the uh the ones that don't have UPCs. And I mean, I just went to one section, like say the Chinese food section of any store, go through that section. And I had a book that was like that thick of just those ASINs that right. you couldn't scan them. Yeah. You know, you couldn't scan them at all. They're there. They're, yeah, it, if you scan barcodes, you'd miss ninety five percent of the great ASINs in that section. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't scan. Yeah, the scanning barcodes is is a uh, yeah. You're gonna miss so much doing yep. that. I still am a huge fan of taking pictures, especially regional or specialty aisles of stores. That uh, you know, products that even with products that are in every store in the U.S., there's good handful of products we sell that is probably in every grocery store in the United States. And yeah. they're great ASINs for us because it's a 12 pack. It's right. just a, it's an underserved listing. And we, we source it. I'm thinking of one particular product. It's a, it's a water flavoring thing that comes in. A, it's a 12 pack. And we've sold 
one or two a day for months of that 12 pack. And it's in literally every store, or grocery store in our area, every Walmart, Target, Kroger, you know, I see it everywhere. <laughs> There's just, it's, a, it's an underserved kind of hidden listing. Yeah. But we're there with a handful of other sellers and it's doing great. I mean, that, that's the business. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I'm the same way. I've got one product. Actually, I found my best product through doing the replens method where I took the product and, and checked it on Amazon. And sure enough, there was two listings. One Amazon was selling. The other one, they weren't. One had the barcode. The other one, they didn't. One sold 10000 a month. The other one sold 2000 a month. And then I realized I could buy it from the Amazon listing and then sell it on this listing. So I'm buying them from doing Amazon, Amazon flip. Now, yeah. you know, just circling this thing. And it was actually, it's a home office item. So when back to school came, I was like the only one that had them in stock because Amazon ran out. And so my listing went from like, like 2000 month sales, which shared by 30 people to two sellers, me and another guy and Amazon didn't have it. And I just sold out of everything that I had just so quick. It was, yeah. it was crazy. That's fun to watch happen, isn't it? Yeah. So I do a lot of Amazon, Amazon flips. I use a few different ways to do it. Like um, one software I use is Smart Scout. Sure. I'm sure we love Scott that. Needham. Good guy. Yeah. Yep, Scott. Yeah, but- we have a great discount on the product at uh, silentgym.com slash SS. He set up a special deal just for our community. Hey. It's in Smart Scout, silentgym.com slash SS. Yeah, this already interrupted you there. I just want to make sure people... I might have used that. Work. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I used that. Um, oh, did you? I okay, up. good. Yeah, so I used that software to do a lot of uh, Amazon, Amazon flips. A lot of people, I mean, if you have some extra capital, it is risky to do it, but mine are buying them when Amazon's in stock waiting for them to go out of stock and then sell, you know, selling back to Amazon. But it's pretty calculated where Amazon's only in stock for two or three times a year. Yeah. You know, and so you know from history how yeah. when they're in stock and you know when they're out of stock, it yeah. goes up here. Yeah. yeah. Just so a you, little a little warning slash tip, Joe, on that if for anyone else who's doing it, maybe you don't want to use your prime account. Yes. To absolutely. Slips, if you weren't aware. Because Amazon right. does not like that. No, no. Against against terms of service for that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't use that. And um, so, yeah, that's we, I've been playing around with that. I do a lot of uh, buy from Amazon overseas and bring it back in the US and sell Amazon here. That's, I haven't heard of many people doing that. Talk me through that a little bit. How are you finding those deals? That's pretty lucrative. I use Keepa primarily. So basically, whatever, whatever you, you know, is out of stock or, you know, underserved, you can pretty much any ASIN you find here, you can check overseas and you know pretty much find it on Amazon. And a lot of times it's cheaper because yeah, a lot of times it's cheaper just because uh, conversion rate. the conversion rate and also people make less income over there, and these brands know that, and you know they price down, you mm-hmm. know, over there. So certain certain countries. So you just have to be careful. I mean, you've got to. I get a lot of canceled orders, especially if you if you don't buy from Amazon, if you buy from a third party, they'll cancel. You can reach out to them too. Just send them an email. Hey, you know, I'm an Amazon seller. You know, I'm not going to stiff you with this stuff. And I, I found the stuff is underserved here and I want to buy a hundred from you. You know, will you ship them to me? And a lot of times they'll they'll be like, yeah, okay. Or no, we, we won't do that. So... So when you're contacting these, because I want to make sure I have to be sensitive to the, the policies Amazon has. Are you finding other Amazon sellers that have this product, or because you have to be careful with that? Are you sending, if you send people messages through the Amazon's communication system and say, "Hey, let's, you know, how about I buy a hundred of these off the off the books?" Amazon doesn't like that. No, no, I'm actually I'm buying right from Amazon itself, and if Amazon's out of stock, if the third party has them, I'll order it from Amazon from the third party. But then the third party will cancel the order. Because they'll, uh, they'll be like, hey, well, we're not sh- we don't know who this guy is, you know? I see. And so I'll reach out to them through Amazon and just say, hey, I'm legit. I'm going to order it again if you're okay with that. Gotcha. Uh, don't cancel it. And then usually it's like 50 50, but it it's always helps to, you know, to ask. So sure. I mean, not you- suspicious of large orders on yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, exactly. well, they're probably merchant fulfilling, they're mailing it out themselves. Yeah. Right. And uh, they want to make sure it's a legit purchase. They're not going to run into some kind of trouble. Yeah, that's fantastic. Giving an example of some of the products, not the exact specifics, but what categories of products are you talking about? Is um, it with anything? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll do some tools and hardware, some electronics, and they're good. They're good for a while, but again, it's it's risky, especially if you're dealing with a, a out of stock and they come back in stock. Um, so right. you want to make sure that 
it's out for a while. A lot of times I'll know there's a shortage, like a worldwide shortage of something. I'll actually call the brand and say, Hey, are you planning on getting any more of these anytime soon? Or are these back or how long are they back ordered for? Ah, you know, they're out to December. Then I'm like, okay, time to stock up. That's your, uh, that's your wholesale buyers experience coming in right there. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You're used to telling customers, well, it's going to be six months. There's nothing I can do. You can call everybody. It's not, it's not a problem with our warehouse. You know, you're used to having to come up with reasonable explanations for shortages, right? Right. As, as an inside sales guy, I did the same thing for a while. I had an inside sales job. And, yeah. and the, the worst part is when you've got this order, you've been piecing together for a week for a customer. And then one of the big dog comes in and takes half of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, that happens all the time. Hey, I need all this. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. You can take it, but I'm taking your order next time. <laughs> right. You always want those big dog accounts because you're the one taking the inventory instead of having it taken, right? Yeah. I know a lot of people do, which I've tried storefront stocking. I use Seller Amp to do that. I don't do too much storefront stocking. Uh, I think a lot of those deals, I just feel like they've, they've tanked quicker. You know, if they found them, then everybody finds them. But I mean, I still have some of my best ASINs that were, I just stumbled upon them storefront stocking and they're still paying off. Yeah, we have a, a module in the Proven Amazon course that talks about that advanced keep of sourcing. And, and we, when Joe says storefront stocking, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's just seeing what other sellers are selling and then putting it through Keepa. You can actually, Keepa actually can do that for you fairly quickly and just pour through and say, hey, here's some of the winners. And sometimes people, give us a little pushback on that. Like, oh, I don't want to sell what other sellers are selling. Well, yeah, that's what the replens business is. On literally every ASIN you are on, you're going to be selling alongside other sellers. That's, right. You know, you mentioned earlier, you're selling on one that had 30 sellers on it at one point. It was profitable for everybody. You got down to just a couple of you and you probably raised your price a little bit and made some extra margin. Uh, but that's the nature of the business. So there's, there's numerous creative ways to find these underserved Replens, underserved listings, I should say. We call them replens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not afraid at all of getting on a listing with. I'm on a listing with a hundred people. I mean, the numbers on that one. I'm curious. I always like to hear those fast movers. Yeah, that one's ten thousand a month too, and it just, it just moves so fast. And you just look at the top, basically 20 percent of people, and the rest of them usually aren't as competitive. So you're just fighting those top people. I've got friends that they don't even get on listings with that many, just if they just see that many. And uh, that doesn't really bother me. You know, I've, I've had success. I just do a test buy and just see how it sells. Do you trust the buy box rotation? Where do you fall in the lineup? Like, let's say, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the super aggressive price and one being the guy that's priced so high, he's never going to make a sale. Like, right. you kind of go in the middle of the pack or what's your strategy when you've got yeah, a lot I, of... Yeah, I played around with that a lot. I mean, I'm kind of an analytical guy and I, I have Be Cool as a repricer. And I, I yeah, played around with that. Too. Do you? Okay, good. I played around with that so much. And typically I found... One, I try not to tank the price. I try not to go... I try not even to set my repricer at the lowest price either because it tends to fight everybody down to the lowest so right. if you just, I, I set it right below, like let the two or three lowest people go. And that I found it won't tank it as fast. And, you know, I'll still get the sales if I'm in the, I'm in like the top, maybe three or four. Right. But I, I, I'm never usually the top one, you know, and if I am the top one, usually it's it, with what I sell is kind of a problem because my stuff, my stuff's mostly like smaller, lower quantity. So I, I don't really have to be the top one because I don't need to sell 300 units, you know? Right. I just sell 10, I got to sell 10, you know? Yeah, I like it. We typically tell FBA sellers who listen to this show, you know, don't be the lowest price seller on FBA on anything ever. There's no reason. Get get up just above the next guy. (laughs) Yeah. They'll always, you always see the guys taking it and you'll look and they'll have no feedback. You know, they're brand new. Yeah. So we're like, you know, they don't don't know their numbers yet. They'll learn. Don't do it. I've done it. I'm guilty. You know, I've I've done it too. You know, those guys come and go quickly. So they can be safely ignored for the yes. most part, right? Yeah. I mean, just wait it out. You really don't need to lose any money on Amazon if you just wait. Just wait. It's like a roller coaster, you know? You're not jumping off the roller coaster at the top, are you? You wait till it get off. You know, you just gotta you just gotta just wait. It's up and down. You might have yeah. to wait a month or yeah. two. We know? like to see a sale or two per month on an ASIN. If we can't get that, we'll walk away from it, lower the price and get rid of it. But what, you're never going super deep into anything. What's right. the most units you've bought of anything for one of your re, for one of your reclinations? I think 
total monthly, like 400. Yeah. 400. Then that's how many it's selling. No, that's how many I bought. That's how many you bought. How, yeah. how long did it take you to sell through those 400? Uh, in a month, uh, less than a month. That was my uh, yeah. Amazon, okay. Amazon flip. Yeah. That was well, my... So yeah, if, if you're buying a month, you know, two months top worth of inventory, it's really kind of hard to lose on these. Right. You don't want to buy a year's worth of anything ever. It's not necessary. All right. Buy, yeah. Absolutely. Buy a month or two worth. And Replan yeah. Dashboard helps you make that decision. Oh, yeah. Back to kind of what you were saying. Some parts of your course that were really good that I really liked. Uh, I, I don't know if this was his name, but was it Brian Olson? Keepa? Yeah, method? he's one of our coaches. He, Brian he, Olson. Okay. They have the Keepa. Yeah, good memory. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did the, the Keepa training for us. Uh, it, it the advanced Keepa training that the storefront stalking type of strategies. Yeah. Were, Mm-hmm. That's really good. Maybe some people underestimate that, but that's really good. I, I know a lot of people take that and dump it into TA, but boy, if you take that manually and just have your VA go through it, it just picks up way more than TA. Just way, way, way more. Yeah, um, remind us what you when you say manually. I know what you mean, but let's remind the, some of the newer folks who don't know what you what you're saying there. Yeah, absolutely. You just go. It'll spit you out. You know, two thousand ASINs, two thousand products to look at. And each one, you just click this little uh, Amazon symbol and it, it pulls it up or a Google symbol pulls it up right into Google and you can search for it and it'll search your local stores and it'll tell you Walmart, Meyer, Kroger, you know, Walgreens. It'll tell you who has the cheapest price. And from there, you know, it's already selling on Amazon. You've already stocked, you know, you, those stores are what you've put into Keepa uh, to spit out that data. And you can go in RA that. Or you can OA it. You can just, you know, online arbitrage. You can get your credit card out and order it online, ship it right to your house. And you can add a lot of, I mean, that that you can do forever, really, because the stores are never ending. I mean, that's just, you search 10 stores and you get, you know, you get 500 ASINs, you know, well, search 10 more, you know, yeah. and get, just keep going and keep going. So, and you can bunny trail off of any of those. You're going to run into brands and things like, wow, this is a really great ace. And I've never noticed this product before. So you search that brand name. Oh, look, yep. there's an eight ounce and a 16 ounce. Oh, a three pack of the 16 ounce, right? And you bunny trail into all these new ASINs. You can just uncover off of one hit, you can uncover potentially a whole bunch of new great replans. But you've got to know what you're looking for. You need to understand the basics. And uh, we've talked a lot about Keepa. I like to point people to podcast episode 369, that foundational tool that we all love, Keepa. That's a good talk through of why we love that tool and hopefully convince you that that is where you need to start your journey of, of finding these underserved ASINs. We call them replans. But uh, yeah, we've covered a lot of tools and a lot of strategies here. I don't want to overwhelm anybody because at its core, it really is a pretty simple business model. Yeah. I mean, I, if I had advice for, you know, for beginners who haven't done any of this is just to, you know, first set up an Amazon account, go, there's a, you know, that the software to scan is free, the Amazon app, go to Walmart clearance or shelves, scan those items and just see if something's profitable, grab that item and send it in. Yeah, and, and, and from there, yeah, you don't need a, a complicated, I mean, I've got, complicated printers now that just print, you know, four by six labels, but you can get the 30 up labels that you can put into a normal printer, you know, the eight by 11 labels, and it has 30 labels on it. And that's what I did. The very first shipment I did, I just printed out some of those labels and uh, slapped it on there. And then you kind of get the feel of how it goes. You know, you don't need a repricer. And once that sells, just do it again. And then you'll learn it. It's a snowball thing. You're just going to learn. Don't give up because... I'm six months in and I mean, I'm still learning enormously every day, but the ASINs add up. It's a huge snowball. I have a friend I'm actually training right now, actually a friend, a family member. They wanted to learn Amazon and they went, I told them all this and they went to the store and they were defeated. They're like, we can't find anything, you know? And I'm like, well, Hey, I don't find stuff every day. Well, when I start, I think I almost do now, but I almost have like, it's just capital problem. Now I have a since I haven't even bought yet, but I told them it just takes time, you know, to figure it out, you know, go to, go to Ollie's. Ollie's is a good one to, you know, if you get RA, just get started. Always fine too. go store. If you can't get to the store, I mean, there's a lot of people that they're homebound or something. They want to do something from home. Just go to a store on Amazon and just see what they're selling and start storefront stocking. Gets a little deeper than that, but just get started. You know, you just got to, start doing something, you know, that's the key. Sure. Start. <laughs> yeah. And I, 
a few key things, a couple of key things that you did. You recognize the importance of community and kind of having people you're doing this with. One of the things we've begun doing with all of our new proven Amazon course students is giving them the option to jump into a, a small, like a kickstart program with this other group of new sellers. And one of the things we notice is they're kind of forming little communities as, as these little groups form and we kind of put them through the initial stages. They form these relationships. And it doesn't have to be with someone who's having huge success, just that accountability of other people kind of going through the same process can be of huge benefit. So our free Facebook group kind of serves that role for a lot of folks, but you need to build those relationships and people you can communicate with. You have a bad day and it doesn't go well, or you want to kick an idea around some people you can call and and work with. It sounds like you've kind of naturally drifted into that. You're very much uh, integrating other people into your life at all times. That's a very healthy way to be doing this business. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can't say enough. You know, your Facebook group, I still, I think I posted in there a couple of days ago. I still post in there, even when I think I know what I'm doing, I'll have a question and people still, you got to be a part of something. You know, you got to be able to bounce people off. How many people are in that group? I think there's 100,000, 60, 70,000. I mean, there's a lot of people in that group. 70. Yeah, we passed 70, 70 here not too yeah. long ago. I mean, to get the advice from 70,000 people and, and they do take time to to answer. I mean, you get your stuff answered. I've, I'm one of those that got an uh, IP complaint. And what that is, you know, somebody on Amazon claimed that my product was counterfeit. Actually, the brand did. Actually, straight up counterfeit, not even with the test buy. Like they just said straight up, it's counterfeit. And uh, in my account health went to like half in a day. And right. I post in your group, you know, I'm one of those that freaked out over it because, you know, I've got so much <laughs> money sitting there. And yeah. And this brand was just absolutely refusing to to help me in any way. And sure enough, like, and I know it sounds crazy. I won't mention the brand, but I'll tell you what they did to me. Maybe if somebody else, uh, if this happened to somebody else, they actually wanted me to go to their third party Amazon representative. And I went to their representative and they said, yeah, we'll definitely remove it. Just give us your receipt. I had no invoice on, just give us your receipt. And then give us five hundred dollars. So oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was bribed you. That was me. Yeah, they got me. And uh, that's a good. I told my buddy about that. He's like, man, that's a good business to get into. Five hundred. You know, because this thing sells like a thousand a month, and you could see it never really had. You know, to to see a true IP complaint on Keepa for those that don't know is is that if you see a bunch of sellers like 10, 15 sellers. And they all drop off in one day one. to one seller. Yeah. That it's is, often a repeating pattern too. You'll see it creep back up and then yeah. down the one. Yeah. And then it gets kicked off. And the people that don't read Keepa, you know, they're the ones jumping on and then, you know, they don't have Keepa. Yeah. So this one, there was no none of that. There was, and I'm on ASINs that my IP alert goes off on. And uh, you know that you can sell on items that are IP'd on other ASINs, just your ASINs not getting IP. You know, the brand might be IPing on all their... Other ASINs, just the one you're you're on that's not getting an IP complaint. So what I did, I looked at that ASIN and I didn't see any red flags. But of course, now looking at it, you can see it kind of come up and they're, everybody's getting it a little bit. It's not a straight drop. They're not just getting them all. They're just getting them one at a time. Yeah. And so I reached out to Amazon. They said, of course, they're like, don't pay it. And I'm like, well, when this happened, my account health went to half. And then uh, my sales dropped, my typical... Sales like three, two to four thousand a day, and it, that it dropped to a thousand a day that entire week. And so that was in my mind, like, wow. Typically, I've got an IP complaints. My account health stays full, mm-hmm. perfect. Why I'm responding, but this one was straight up a counterfeit complaint where the brand said they bought it and it was counterfeit, and it, it totally wasn't true. So Amazon, I reached out to Amazon. They said, of course, don't pay it. They understand. But if you get another one, they said, well, let deactivate your account, which of course isn't true anyways, because this is just somebody I had Amazon, one of their thousands of people, what they have to say. So I ended up actually, somebody else said that they know this and this happened to them, the same brand, and they paid it and it came off their account. So I took the 500 bucks, I paid it and sure enough, it came off. They were legitimate, it came off my account. And... Uh, I didn't have to do that. I could have just let it fall off in the 180 days, but right. for my own mental, <laughs> whatever thought, was going yeah. on. $500, you know, move on and I get the, I get it. Removed. I had to do it. Yeah. Your sales I, bumped back up. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. My sales I, I bumped right back what, uh, up the next day. You didn't happen to talk to Jeff 
chick on that one, did you? I did. He, I did. He said, don't pay it. He said he would, right. uh, you know, get a hold of them and stuff. And I said, well, yeah. If it had been $5,000, yeah. now you'd be like, ah, I'm not going to. Yeah. If it was more, math. I would have been, yeah, exactly. I'm like, it, you know, it, I made it, enough last month. The advice that I would like to give in that situation, if you're kind of being bribed into getting rid of an IP, it, typically you don't want to pay that. We don't want to encourage no, that behavior. No. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's a, you know, the thing I like about this story is there are some gray fuzzy edges, but that's a lot of the reason why there's so much opportunity. You know, the, the rules are still kind of being written and discovered on this. This entire business model is in its infancy. The idea of a, an everything store, which is what Bezos, there's a book on that title, like a store where you can go to literally buy anything and everything. And the, the shelves are stocked by hundreds of thousands of people out there kind of scouring, looking for the things, the underserved edges of the shelves in this virtual store, you know? Yeah. It's an amazing thing that we're playing with, but there's some uncharted and strange territory for sure. Uh, but that's just part of the fun, part of the challenge. I do have, you know, kind of one final question. Where do you see Amazon and online arbitrage going in the future? Do you think it's getting more flooded? I mean, I, I have people that I know that are training tons and tons of new sellers, but you know, Amazon's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as these new sellers are coming on. So where, where do you see it, Amazon in, in, 10, in 10 years, Amazon uh, reselling? Yeah, you know, I've got a, I've got a perspective that I think it will be pretty useful to you on this because I've been selling physical products online for 20 years now. And I remember 20 years ago, People saying, oh, this won't last. I mean, it's going to get saturated. It's just so easy to find stuff and put it out there and sell it on eBay or whatever, you know, whatever the website is. Just so easy to do it. Yeah, it's just going to get completely saturated. There's no opportunity here. I've been hearing that really? for 20 years and it keeps okay. getting bigger. And every fourth quarter, we set a new sales record for e-commerce. And the big important numbers are these, Joe. Here's the numbers that, that I keep in my mind is if you look at all of retail in the United States, online and offline, you know, put it on one big pie, all retail in one big pie. And I typically, I have people guess at this point. Have you heard me talk about this before by any chance? I don't know. I don't okay. know. If you, I don't know if I'm going to ask you a question about it. <laughs> what percent of all retail activity in the United States is online? Oh, well, um, I'd say probably all retail activity. I'd probably, probably say 70%, maybe. Yeah, that's one of the higher guesses I get. Okay. Chop it in half. Oh, okay. And then chop it in half again. And then chop it in half again. And you're, <laughs> I mean, we're talking 12, 15%, right? Is, is to be specific. Is online. 12 to 15% of retail activity in the United States is online. Most people have of, the impression that... Maybe I'm just thinking that of my, my retail or my... I'm yeah, thinking of how you shop. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but most people aren't there yet. A lot of people aren't there yet. There are a lot of people, and actually, about 85% of all economic activity in the retail arena is traditional brick and mortar, get in your car, order from a store. It's not online yet. Now, right. that's yeah. 15% where we are now. Not too long ago, that was, that was 10%. Not too long ago, that was 5%. COVID bumped us five years into the future, right? Uh, with because in, in about a year and a half time, a lot of people got used to shopping online. But retail is not online for the most part yet, but it's coming. We yeah. are in the infancy of all of this. I would argue that one of the most valuable skills, and we're seeing this, we've got entrepreneurship programs at like uh, Missouri State University, for example. They've got an entrepreneurship program. What are they teaching the kids there? They're using the Proven Amazon course, our course, to teach them the skill set of finding underserved niche markets in e-commerce because they know that's where the future is. If you've got the skill of finding stuff that you can buy for five and sell for, for 20 online and that kind of arbitrage skill set, that's one of the most valuable skill sets you can have, in my opinion, for the next 5, 10 plus years online uh, in all of entrepreneurship. Because right. It doesn't matter what the platform is. So where's Amazon going? Well, Amazon's got some competitors. Walmart's picking up speed. Right there's a, there's competitors nipping at their heels. Your ability to find profitable inventory and then turn it with a systemized process that's a beautiful business model. That it's not getting saturated. If anything, it's outpacing our ability to keep up with supply. As illustrated by you know, there's plenty of people in our community. They just look for completely unserved listings where there's no sellers selling the product and it's easily sourced. 
just right. went out of stock six months ago and no one's picked it back up again yet. You can look for those kind of indicators. We train on this. And now you're, you're the only seller. And some other sellers might find it eventually. But there is underserved shelf space in Amazon's virtual marketplace by the millions of listings. So no, saturation is not a concern. Now, if you, if you go and you say, what are the top 20 best-selling items on Amazon? I want to go sell some of those. Good luck. You're going to be selling right alongside thousands of other sellers who are pounding away on the same popular product. That's not the right. model. We teach you to get away from that you know, peak of the bell curve and get off into the long tail a little bit where you're selling one, two, three units a week of all these interesting, random, boring items. And uh, that's the model. So right. I see a very bright future for it. I think we're in the infancy. I think the opportunity is there for anybody who wants to take advantage of it. And this is, and this is probably even the better part, Joe. And I could talk a long time. I love this question, but and I'll, I'll cut myself off here. But replans is just one of a dozen plus ways that you can really tap into this massive Amazon marketplace. Because what you're going to discover as you wade into the replans water, I mean, you're at a 100,000 plus month business. You're going to have some of these products that kind of float and look interesting and think, I want to I want to partner with that company or I want to private label or I want to bundle that in my own unique offer of some kind and create my own opportunity around this hot product. And we teach you how to do that. So now you've right. got your own listing and there's no other sellers that can sell on your listing. Your brand registered, your trademarked, you've got your own, you know, uh, logo on your own box. And and that repeat buyers even. And Amazon's even starting to roll out the ability to email market to your customer base. That's all coming in 2023. So lots of opportunity here. This is just the baseline that you're tapping into right now. Right. Oh, that's good. Because you know we all do this and you know love what we do. And that's why we do it and want to do it for a long time. I want to retire doing this. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see any reason why you can't. E-commerce in general. Now, the players and the tools come and go. The, the platforms and the tools, those shift. But the skill set, the community, you know, this community that you're in right now, this 70,000 member listeners to this podcast, if you jump back in time 10 years or so ago, almost none of us were doing Amazon. Very few. Right. We were all eBay. That was the only game in town. Amazon was all about books 10, 12 years ago. That's it. If you didn't sell books, why use Amazon? Right. But here it came. Here come this this gorilla. <laughs> it just grew really fast. And that FBA concept where I can send all my inventory to your warehouse, Amazon. That's awesome. Let me empty my garage and send you all my inventory. Then as it sells, you pay me. Well, if eBay had done that, kind of like Blockbuster missed out on being Netflix. Right. Right. Yeah. eBay missed out on being Amazon because they didn't offer the warehouse. They didn't go buy some warehouses and figure out how to hold other people's inventory for them. And right. Yeah, I still, I mean, I still love eBay too. Oh, still, so do we. still sell on eBay. I mean, I, I sell all my Amazon returns on eBay. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can almost not lose. I mean, you can, you mostly, uh, losing is breaking even, you know, on Amazon typically. Uh, yeah, you do lose some, you know, dollar to dollar two a unit. Sometimes you got to liquidate, but most of the time it's, it's a pretty safe bet. As long as you hold, you know, don't get out too quick. It's a good game. I only wish that I would have found it. Probably when you found it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, right. it's changed and matured and, and, and over the years. And, and you know, the, the replens model, it kind of emerged. It emerged out of this community. We were the first community to, be, to teach it. Uh, but it was a lot of scanning barcodes and kind of guessing until... Right, Keepa. right. <laughs> in, in Keepa, the tool that we all use and love, it wasn't designed for the purpose that we use it for. We've referred thousands and thousands of users to that company and very little affiliate commissions, by the way, because we hardly ever use our affiliate link. Uh, but it was originally designed to help people keep an eye on certain products. So when it went on sale, they could buy it for their own use. Right. right? That's the purpose it was designed for originally. Mm. But our community got real creative with it and started using it for different purposes. Because of the historical data, it helps you really, like you said, lower your risk of making stupid decisions with your inventory buys. It's now, so now you're only looking for the winners. I could, sometimes I illustrate it this way, Joe, and you'll appreciate this with your background. You know, you sold for some companies in the wholesale. And a lot of times, they've out of necessity, they, did, they have to have their loss leader products out there. The stuff they just they break even on, you know, retail has their like 20% of the inventory in any retail store is break even just to get you in the door to stay competitive. 
Well, as replen sellers, we don't need any lost leaders. We only sell the highly profitable stuff. And if it stops being profitable, we stop selling it. It's that simple. Yes, yes, absolutely. So that's a huge advantage we have as this virtual business model is you know, very low quantities of highly profitable products that sell a few times a week or a few times a month for us. And if that, that stops happening, flip it on eBay, break even, and we're done with that product. Yeah, it's a great model. Yep, yep, exactly. Well, any any closing thoughts before we before we wrap this one up? You've been a great guest. You've picked up admirably so. You've picked up this business. I mean, I learned a couple things from you, and I love when new students come into the community and emerge, you know, quickly as connecting the dots and, and making this work. It's going to inspire a lot of people, I'm sure. But anything else on your mind before we wrap this one up? No, um, just again to those new people, um, keep at it. Soak up all these videos that you can. I mean, I I got so much hope from watching video after video after video on your show of everybody doing this. And that's how I came up with all my strategies. I mean, that's how you're going to just write notes, write notes on everything people are saying, write notes on what what products they're using, what software, all those software, as you can see, none of those was a, was a surprise to Jim. I mean, those are all the ones, the, the standard yeah. softwares you those have. Those are the sponsors of this podcast for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you. those are... And I, I keep mine at the base minimum at my scale, what I need. I don't see me adding any other software. This is pretty much it. Uh, running at that type of scale, I can run you know million or multi-million dollar Amazon business with just... Those few, I'm thinking I'm paying 300 a month, you know, in software. Uh, but you can start doing it a lot cheaper, but don't give up. Just keep learning, invest in yourself, get in a group, a mastermind group, get some friends you can bounce up ideas off of. Just with those things, you'll be successful. Yeah, fantastic. Great advice, man. You've definitely dialed this in. You're very articulate. You, I think you're going to encourage, like I said, a lot of folks to awesome. go whatever that next level is, maybe get started or maybe take a little more seriously or invest in a tool that you've mentioned today to kind of ramp things up. Well done, Joe. It's a pleasure getting to know you. I loved your story too, man. And God bless your work on uh, including those people that God sends into your life and integrating them into your business and that mentorship role that you're playing. It's phenomenal. 